Well, hi there, I'm Sandy Alnock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube. And I'm gonna show you a simple silhouetted background after I color a complex image. So if you wanna get just to the simple silhouetted background, just fast forward in the video. But this is an image from Art Impressions, so cute. It's a compiled image, so you actually can just color the three little characters and on in one image without having to do any masking. And then they also come with these two on the left. And the two on the left are because this is intended to be used with action wobbles. And I will show you how that works at the end. Basically cut them out and layer them on with an action wobble so that those will jiggle and the rest of the card stays still. So it's a pretty cute way to make an interactive card. So what I'm doing on the card on the right hand side is testing out the colors that I want to use on the portion that I'm going to pop. If you're ever going to pop part of an image, I like to color some of it underneath in case somebody peeks under the image so they see some color there. But it's also helpful to practice your colors and see how much of each color you want to actually put down and are the colors that you've chosen going to work. It's a great, great practice point. I'll be showing you both of them from time to time, but not on every single one. But you can see how well these colors are blending. I wasn't really sure how that RV was going to blend with my R's, but I'm actually pretty impressed with how much it looks like a little piggy. So it worked out pretty well for me. So I'm just using my lightest color to blend some of these together and give him some real soft blending on my piggy piggy. And then I decided I wanted to try and see what happens if I use an even darker RV color. Am I gonna like that? And what happens if I blend it with my RV93? And I kinda started liking it. It gave him a lot more depth. You can see the difference between the one on the left and the right. And if you know anything about me, you know I like contrast. So I tried to see how all the blending would work out and then did it, I decided to, to proceed with it so I did it on his legs and his little hand and I gave him some little color in his toes and finished the one over on the left that I'm going to cut out. So now it's time for all the little pumpkins and I'm just going to color each one of those with the same color. I was looking on the package uh, because Art Impressions always gives you an idea on the packaging what the images are intended to be colored like and they had different colors for the pumpkins. I decided I wanted all orange pumpkins, so I was gonna have to adjust a few things as I went because right now we have that little duck wearing a pumpkin costume holding a pumpkin. And that was gonna cause me an issue. So as I was doing this portion, I was thinking, okay, so how am I going to handle that? And just kept thinking about it while I was working. I often will do that, it's just think ahead about what the next step is. What is it that I, I can do to recover an area that I might need to fix or what, what kind of approach can I take in another area of my card? So I'm coloring my little bee since I knew that that was a deal that I would, I would proceed with. And I colored his beak and his feet, but I wanted them to be a little bit orangey, but not totally. So I'm using the same pink color that I used on the pig. And that gave me the thought, what happens if I layer the pink on top of the yellow to make a second pumpkin color? So I figured I will try that. I'll color my pumpkins first in the yellow that I've chosen and then go over them with that orange. It makes a really pale orange. So it wasn't quite what I was hoping for, but at least it was worth a try. And if I used a darker pink, I could probably have made that happen. But now when I layer my orange on top of all that yellow color, I do get a slightly yellower orange so that the pumpkin that he's holding pops out a little separately from the pumpkin that he's wearing. And so that was really helpful to be able to kind of play around with those colors and do a little color glazing for those who have taken my Copic Jumpstart class on my website. That talks a lot about color glazing, and that is one of the places where that kind of knowledge comes in helpful, so you can invent colors that you don't already have. So now I'm just gonna fill in a couple extra parts on my, my piggy bee. <laughs> Never knew that pigs would dress up like bees, 
but he looks adorable. He's got his little piggy wings on for his bee costume. Um, finishing up a few details. And then I needed to add some shadows. So I'm going to add some shadows on that yellow bee costume using the same pink that I used on the pig. And then I'm going to use my gray to put some shadows onto that orange that I created. That's going to give me a different looking orange than I had for the pumpkin. And I put a little bit of gray into the yellow outfit and went over it with some yellow. So if you use the gray and it doesn't quite work out the color that you want, go over it with the regular color again and often you can kind of fix some of that up. So I blended out a little bit of my ducky in his whiteness and moved on to my little elephant. So he's the one that's not going to get any popping done on him. He's not going to have any action going on. So I want him to be colored really well and color really strongly so that he stands up against all the action that's going to be going on in front of him. I'm going to put a little purple cape on him, and that was indicated on the packaging. I thought that was a really good solution, and especially because I was trying to figure out what color I would make the hat. I wanted to do a dark background so that these guys would be in a scene outside, and there would be some shapes behind them and stuff that would be probably dark blacks and dark blues. And the purple allowed me to have a purple hat and a purple cape that will show up against a dark background. So I'm just using two different purples. And sometimes you can use just two colors. You don't always need to have three colors to shade everything on a card. And then I'll go back in with my light, sh my, my light shade to blend that a little bit and soften those colors as they merge into each other on both the hat and the cape. And then I needed to start working on the rest of the elephant. Now that I knew how dark the purple cape was going to be, I could work on the elephant. And since the lighting is clearly coming from the left hand side, and that's where I'm picturing maybe there's a street light in the scene on that left hand side, then I started kind of figuring out which parts of the elephant are going to stick out into the light and which ones are going to be underneath the cape, which, one, which parts are going to be hidden by the cape. And basically only the tips of his hands. Do elephants have hands? I'm not sure if they have hands. I guess they don't, do they? This one has hands. But I'm going to put a heavy shadow on the right hand side, have just a few parts popping out, parts on his, his trunk, parts on, a little bit on his legs on that far left hand side, and have nice heavy shadows on the right hand side so that he ends up looking like he's definitely in shadow and he's definitely dimensional. And now I'll soften out some of that with another gray and do some blending to, to blend those colors together. And depending on what kinds of colors you choose, you can make him a really light elephant, really dark elephant, a lot of different ways to approach him. And you could make pink inside his ears or something, but I wanted it to remain kind of dark so that the animals that are in front of him will pop out more. So I wanted to give him a lot of contrast. So this whole time I was thinking, I've got to add more color to this. I think he needs a little more contrast. He's just not got enough yet. But I thought I'll get all of my blending done first. So I went in with a C0 to blend all the lightest areas and then decided I would go back in with another layer of the C4. So sometimes if you don't have a color that's dark enough for you, just add another layer of the same color. And it usually works best if you let it dry for a little bit first. Otherwise, you're just going to keep pouring more color in there and causing bleeding instead of adding another layer of color. So adding some really strong contrasty colors. And now it's time for the background. So I started by just adding a black shape behind him and I wanted to do a silhouette shape. So I'm going to do a silhouette of a house, which is really basically a triangle. And if you make the triangle line, make it stop and then create a fence line and the side of the house. It's going to read as a really nicely illustrated background, but it's really just shapes. You can draw them in pencil first if that helps you, 
but I find that just drawing them in marker, I can sit and constantly adjust. Since nobody knows what it was supposed to look like, I can sit there and adjust the angles and things with my marker as I go. And I don't have to sit and pencil it all out first. But for some folks, penciling it out will really be a big help to get that part done. On the other side, I'm just going to have the fence continue across my card and continue in that dark shape. And that's a T10, so it's not a full black. And you can add a couple layers to that and it will smooth it out once you add layers to it, as long as your marker is good and juicy. And the same thing with my sky, I can put my night sky in there. You could also do the same thing by fussy cutting out all the animals and then putting them onto cut out shapes that you cut out from pieces of paper and you don't have to color it with a marker. But my sentiment, I just drew a box around it and then I'm drawing little lines down to make a sign out of it. So there's a sign that they're walking past with the sentiment. And here I'm going to add a little bit more layer of color to the house. So the house looks a little bit different than the fence area in front of it. You could make the whole fence just a solid shape like this by going over it again or you can do what I'm going to do which is add just a little tiny bit after I get the house done I'm going to add a little tiny bit of interest to that shape that fence shape by making some lines going down and it's color on color so it's very subtle and on the finished card you see very little of it but it's enough to make it look a little bit more like a fence and then I took a white pen and added a little bit more of the lines to the, uh, the little fence post so that it stands out more. It wasn't working enough with just the black pen that I had used. The last little bit is some very simple shapes to add to the silhouetted scene by making a sidewalk in a light gray. And you can see I'm just gonna go over it again with long strokes. I'm using the side of the marker so I get plenty of color down. If your marker is dry, this will not work very well. So you want a good juicy marker. And then I'm going to use that same T10 marker to make the road in front. So even with simple shapes like this, you don't have to have massive drawing skills. You can make a scene out of very simple shapes. And now I'm going to add a strong shadow from the left hand side, since that's where all the light's coming from, off to the right. And just one very simple shape to add some contrast to them and the, the ground that they're standing on. Now the last thing is going to be to add the action wobble bits and I'm going around the image to basically cover up any of those little white areas where my fussy cutting didn't work. There are dyes that go with this but I didn't want white lines around mine since I had all this dark background color. If you've got a white background it's a lot easier to handle the color of the, the dye edge around it. But you can see these mini action wobbles are much tinier than the old action wobbles but they work the same and the way I figure out which end I want to tack onto which side. I hold one side and I see which one is more wobbly, <laughs> I guess. You know, which one wobbles the way that you want your card to wobble. And then there's sticky back on both halves of it, on the top half and the bottom half. And so all you have to do is peel off the backing, which takes a little bit of fighting sometimes to do. And then you can just stick it onto the card. And it's very easy to stick on. If you're sending these to little children, know that they will eventually break them off because they're way too much fun to sit and wiggle. But look how cute they are with their shaky, shivery, quivery, quaky Halloween card. I think it's just adorable. For kids, it's always fun to give them something interactive. And look at all the detail that those simple shapes add to the card without having to have a whole lot of drawing going on in the background. You can do it with very simple shapes, especially on Halloween cards. They're perfect for this since they're night scenes. So here's a couple more videos. If you're interested in watching something else, you can hop over to the blog. You can leave me a comment in the comment section down below. You can hit the like button. There is so much you can still do today. You can hit the subscribe if you haven't yet because I put out about three videos a week and would love to share more with you. And you can always click on one of these videos to watch another interactive card. And I'll see you guys later on. Have a good one. Bye-bye.